in Malaysia, we always had the perception that the Toyota Camry is mostly owned by middle-aged men. This is also the same reason that the Camry has been called an uncle car by many Malaysians. In recent times, Toyota has been busy changing their image from producing reliable boring cars to making reliable fun cars. With that, welcome back to carsick.my for another review video. This time round, I'll be checking out the latest generation Toyota Camry and see whether Toyota manages to turn the Camry into a fun car to drive. For the latest generation Camry, Toyota has given the D-segment sedan a sleek and sporty profile. This is achieved by making the latest generation Camry lower and wider than before. On the 2022 model, some minor changes have been done to the Camry to freshen up the looks of the vehicle. These changes are relatively small and it requires an eagle eye to spot the differences. Starting from the front, the air intake slats on the front bumper have now been painted in gloss black, which replaces the dark grey colour found on the previous leaf car. At the rear, Toyota has done some minor graphical changes to the tail lights for the updated Camry. Apart from that, everything else back there stays pretty similar to the pre-facelift vehicle. Just like the pre-facelift car, the updated Camry continues to use full LED headlights and tail lights to provide illumination. And finally, the updated Camry now comes with a new set of 18-inch rims that matches the looks of the vehicle. Wrapped in 235-45R18 tires, this set of rims are finished in gunmetal grey with a diamond cut surface to give it a sporty look. Right before I got the keys to the Camry, I was reviewing Toyota's luxury SUV, the Toyota Harrier. When I stepped on board the Camry, the interior felt familiar instantly as it somewhat resembles the interior of the Harrier. While the interior may not be as plush as the Harrier, it's still a very solid interior with most of the touch points being covered in soft touch materials. For the 2022 update, the Camry interior now looks even more sportier than before, as the brown colour wood trims have been replaced with black colour ones. Just like the Harrier, the instrument cluster on the Camry is also an analog unit with a 7-inch multi-info display sitting in the centre. While it may not look as posh as the one found on the Harrier, it still has all the basic function that an instrument cluster should have, and it's easy to read. And at the centre of the dashboard, sits a 9-inch infotainment screen that comes with connectivity functions such as Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. The infotainment system is hooked up to a 9-speaker JBL premium sound system, which sounded sharp and clear with a good amount of bass. Sitting in the driver's seat, it's very easy to get into a proper driving position. The driver's seat is very comfortable and it has enough support to keep me in place when driving on twisty roads. Both front seats are electrically adjustable and there is a boss switch to allow the driver or rear passengers to adjust the front passenger seat when needed. And as for the rear seats, I don't think anyone will have any complaints when they have the seat in the back. When I'm seated behind myself, I still get a decent amount of headroom and legroom back there to feel comfortable even on long journeys. As some companies uses the Camry to fetch their VIPs around, Toyota did put in some effort to make the rear seats as comfortable as possible. The rear seats have the ability to recline electrically and it can be adjusted through a control panel that is integrated into the centre armrest. Apart from the seat recliner, this control panel also allows the rear passengers to adjust the rear climate zone, the radio and the rear sunshade. While the rear sunshade is electrically powered, both rear doors also come with manual sunshade to block out the sun. For a D-segment sedan, the 495 litre boot capacity is not the largest in its class, but it's fairly usable for most vehicle buyers. The boot space is also not extendable as the rear seats could not be folded down. While the exterior and interior changes are minor, the major upgrade that the Camry receives is in the form of a brand new powertrain. The Camry now gets a new 2.5 litre naturally aspirated dynamic force engine, which was intended for the Camry from the get go. On top of that, the transmission has also been upgraded to an 8 speed automatic transmission. Here are the performance figures for this powertrain.
With this new powertrain, the Camry's performance has also been improved for better drivability. At lower RPM, this engine has strong low-end torque to help the driver to drive the car as smoothly as possible. As the engine goes into higher RPM, I can feel the additional horsepower and torque that the Dynamic Force engine can produce. With the additional performance, it also increases the driver's confidence level when overtaking another vehicle on a single carriageway. Paired with this new 8-speed automatic transmission, the Camry drives even smoother than before. The new transmission changes gear in a very smooth manner and it's always in the right gear at the right moment. The transmission is so smooth that I can barely feel the gear change when I'm driving the Camry. By adding two additional gear ratios, the transmission not only provided better acceleration, it also helped out on the engine's fuel efficiency. For a 2.5 liter engine, the fuel efficiency is on par with a modern day 2.0 liter turbocharged engine, which is really impressive. Just like the pre-facelift car, the facelifted Camry continues to be built on the famous TNGA platform. The TNGA platform turned the Camry into a very capable vehicle in tackling the twisty roads, where it keeps the car as flat as possible when taking corners. The chassis is stiff, and I can feel that this chassis can handle even more power than the 25 liter Dynamic Force engine can produce. On top of that, the suspension is also very well tuned, and just like the Harrier, it strikes a good balance between comfort and handling. To me, one of the highlights of a TNGA vehicle is the steering system. The steering wheel feels precise and it provided sufficient feedback from the front wheels. Brakes wise, the all wheel disc brakes do provide decent braking performance to slow the car down. And as for the safety systems, the Camry is fitted with a long list of safety and driver assistance systems. The safety and driver assistance systems available on a Camry include For a price tag of 210,000 ringgit, the Camry is not only a reliable vehicle, but it's also a rather fun vehicle to drive. The latest Camry not only appeals to the mature audience, even younger car buyers will now have another reason to own the Camry. Due to the market shift, we get to see more Harriers on the road compared to this latest Camry. Let's hope that Toyota will not stop making a fun Camry for those who didn't want an SUV. Hope you enjoyed this review. Please kindly leave a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you would like to find out more about the Toyota Camry, feel free to head on over to our website, carsick.my for more information. Hope to see you soon. Bye.